Welcome to another MBS Highway live webinar. I'm your host, Megan Anderson, and today's guest is very special to me. She is the CEO and founder of The Defining Difference, a success-based mortgage coaching and training company devoted to helping mortgage leaders master the power of bold and intentional choices to create a defining difference in their own life and business. She's been acknowledged as one of the top 100 most influential mortgage executives in America by Mortgage Executive Magazine for five years in a row. And she's also been named the top 100 mortgage loan originators in the U.S. by Mortgage Originator Magazine for more than a decade. Her goal is to help clients get more out of life by making powerful, intentional choices to propel their income and achieve their peak performance, nurture their health and wellness, build connected referral relationships, and accelerate their success in seven key areas of their life by removing the blocks that limit their potential. And today she's going to help us get ready for 2024. Join me in welcoming Cindy Ertman. Thank you, Megan. It's so great to be with you. It's always so fun to do these calls with you. And you know, I'm one of your biggest fans. So really, yes. thanks for having me. I love it. Of course, we're ready, Cindy. All right. Well, clearly, we all we don't need to belabor the fact that 2024 or 2023 has been a year to remember without question. And I can honestly say in my own long term mortgage career, uh, I've had some difficult, challenging seasons as an originator for almost 35 years. But I can also see this year and the pain that a lot of my coaching clients have gone through that this was not for the faint of heart and really goes down in history as I think probably the most challenging market in mortgage history. So with that said, so much of it as we look ahead is like, okay, we've got to stop looking backwards now. You know, we've got to redefine ourselves going into 2024. And every single year as an originator, I would wake up in January and go, okay, we get to start all over again. How do I redefine myself in the market today? And that's what I really want us to focus on today. How do we really create what we're looking for in our business and in our life, but do it very intentionally as we move into a new year? And yeah, we've got to do business differently, Megan, as you and I were talking about earlier. We can't do business the same way we've done business because we're in a different kind of market that really takes us creating a much broader reach to be successful in this business. And I think, you know, on the heels of COVID going into this kind of a market, just you know, really made it extremely difficult for people from a mindset perspective. So I'm going to jump in, but I'm going to, I'm going to start with that today because as I go through this last year, and I don't even care if we're talking about the best originators in the nation, you know, getting the calls from people that just feel down and out, they've lost their motivation. They're not sure they want to stay in the business. And these are people that have done you know, hundreds of millions in production over the years. And it's really challenging to see people that have been so successful feel so less than based on the origination production they've had this year. So let's talk about what we can do, right? What we can do as we move into the new year. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and share screen. You can see that. Okay. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and get started. So today we're going to talk about three powerful tools to really jumpstart your mortgage success in 2024. I am passionate about helping people kind of see our business through a different light and re get re-inspired to really take it to another level. So for some of you that may not know who Cindy Ertman is, just a little bit of a quick highlight about my background. I have been more than in your shoes. I was in your shoes in a very big way. You know, obviously it was one of the nation's top producers for many, many years, ran a very large branch here in Manhattan Beach, California with my partner. I've done over 2.5 billion in mortgage loans in my career. And I still have a passion and a love and a drive for this business. And my passion is helping mortgage loan originators grow and to see new opportunities and possibilities and maybe push them a little more outside their comfort zone, right? To really achieve the success that they desire because we have to, we have to do things differently. And unfortunately, to be successful right now, we've got to get outside our comfort zone. So we don't need to go through these. Clearly, we know these are the current challenges that are facing mortgage loan originators. And as we go into a new year, you know, none of us really have the total crystal ball as to when this market is going to change. But one thing with a 35-year mortgage career, I can say is it always does. You know, and so we, we need to prepare now for the season ahead and get excited about the possibility that we can create. 
So I'm going to really challenge you today to just decide, and I want you to take some notes while you're on this call or take some pictures of the screen, and I will give you an opportunity to put in your email so we can send you our goal planning guide so you can actually get it created, and I would love to actually see your guide once you finish your goal plan, and so I would love to be able to give you some feedback on that. So today we're going to talk about first and foremost, developing a bulletproof mindset. And as we always hear that, right? You got to have a great mindset. You got to be positive. But I always go, well, how do you do that? In reality, if you're going through a tough season and we add in the holidays, sometimes it's even tougher. How do you really develop a bulletproof mindset? So I'm going to give you some tools on that. And then I want you to think about not just your goal plan, but the vision that you want to create for your future. And then we're going to look at a mortgage success goal plan so that you can really get clear and start to think about what goals you want to create in the first quarter. So I want you to think about today a couple of business goals that, you know, maybe have been outside your comfort zone, um, but you know you actually need to step into more fully. And I want you to start putting pen to paper around what you want to create in 2024, because I think we could have a comeback year, but we've got to set the stage in a really meaningful way. So I want you to think about, like, what are the limiting beliefs that may be holding you back? You know, we all tell our stories, tell ourselves stories that just aren't true, right? There's so many stories people have made up this year about how, you know, it's their fault the production is down. It's their fault that they're not building realtor partnerships. It's their fault they're not getting the business that they deserve. But the reality is that a lot of times it's our own limiting beliefs that are holding us back. And I have countless stories of limiting beliefs with people that I've actually coached and what happens when they break through those limiting beliefs and they just say, we're going to go bold this year and we're going to not let our fear stand in the way. And I have done that many times in my own career and done a lot of things that are very scary. But the thing is on the other side is really where the gold is. And that's what I want you to think about today. Because I really do believe that we all carry the matches around to burn down our own house. We all do. It's like the human condition. And you take a market like this and it just exacerbates that in a really big way. So what we want to do is we want to shift that level of thinking into a whole different way of going, all right, instead of looking back on what our challenges have been, we're not making the money we need to to support our families. We don't know if we can stay in this business. We don't know if we have the wherewithal and what is the new year going to bring? None of us know, but what we can do is shift our choices and get more intentional about how we're leading our business each and every day. So Tom Couture is a dear, dear friend of mine out of Lubbock, Texas. Tom was in my program for two years, my high-level mortgage mastermind elite program. And Tom just released a video a couple of months ago on when he came into my program, the limiting beliefs that he had. He had never broken 38 million. He'd been in the business 42 years. And he led a training a couple of months ago and was telling the story of when he came to my retreat and his own limiting beliefs, feeling he wasn't worthy to be in the group. But the funny thing is, is Tom did the work. He leaned in, he broke through his own limiting beliefs. He would be the first one to tell you that. And it just shows that you can change at any age, no matter how long you've been in this business. Because Tom went from 38 million to 58 million to 132 million, serving almost 600 families and is a major leader in our business today. And I'm so proud of what he's accomplished. But really what this boils down to is he made a choice to make change. He made a choice to lean into a different possibility for his future. And that's what I want you to think about for yourself today. This is one of my favorite quotes. And if you're not familiar with this quote, take a picture of it because I really believe that this is what drives our human behavior. Because your beliefs become your thoughts. If you think the market is terrible, I mean, obviously the market's challenging. We know that, we know that's factually. But then your thoughts become your words. And what are you speaking out to the universe every day? If you look back over the course of 2023, how positive have you been with your team? How positive you've been with your realtor partners? You know, are you putting really positive messaging out to the world and giving other people inspiration? Because your words really become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. And your values really do determine your future destiny. And I really believe that. And I study this because I know it to be true when we start to reframe our message and we put a different message out to the world and we start to do our own inner work to be a more positive, better version of ourselves, we can influence change. So today we're just gonna talk about a couple of things here. I want you to think consciously 
Now, this may seem like a simple statement to focus on what you can control and influence, but in reality, that was one of the single biggest lessons I learned being on the executive you know, team of a national mortgage bank. Because look, this business is tough. You can't control the market. So what we have to focus on is what can we control? And if you get really clear on that, going, we got to focus on what we can control, what we can influence, and then we have to focus, we got to let go of the rest, right? So today I want you to think about what can you control? You can control your daily activities for how you're going to build and drive your business to that next level of success. So we want to be aware of our thoughts and what we're putting out into the world. We want to really think about our habitual negative and self-defeating thoughts. Be aware of what you're thinking. I have a very expensive coach personally, and he always says, notice what you're noticing. And I thought that was kind of a strange thing until I would go on my morning workout or I'd go on my walk and I'd start noticing what I was thinking about. So notice, are you thinking about something that's inspirational to your future? Or are you really thinking about something that's not going to serve you? And we got to start to consciously shift those patterns of behavior because we want to start to shift some of our negative thoughts with a new positive inspirational voice in our head to put conscious words to what we want to create instead of what we really don't want in our life. And we're all guilty of this, myself included, right? But I do think it's terribly important to create daily mindset practices. And you hear about this. I'm not telling you anything new, right? You certainly know this. But it's different to do it with crazy busy lives. For those of you that have children, I raised three of them. I know it only too well. It's hard to find time in the day to really focus on you. But for years, probably 20 years now, I've had a daily morning routine. And yes, sometimes I get off course. But mine does include my gratitude journal, which I started with this morning. I do a 10 to 12 minute meditation. I love the Insight Timer app. It's my favorite free app. It's got great meditations on it. And for all of you that say, I cannot meditate, I'm gonna encourage you to start small, do a two minute, a five minute. I teach all my coaching clients how to actually go into a quiet place to help you get more creative, to help you solve problems in a bigger way. Exercise, as we know, is one of the best things you can do. And we're gonna talk about health and wellness as part of your goal plan. And if you're not taking care of yourself as you go into this new year, I want you to put that as your number one goal because without it, nothing else matters. So I want you to focus on what you can do to build your own mindset, your own healthy body, and get intentional about some practices. We don't have to go from zero to 10. We just want to go from zero to one or zero to three. But for me, like exercise, Megan, I don't know if you love it, but I hate it. Like, I just don't like exercise. Some people love it. And I wish I was that person which is why I have a trainer and I work out with her twice a week because if left to my own devices, I won't do it, which is why probably many of you need business coaches because you may not be doing the daily activities you need to do because you need accountability. You've got to show up to somebody and I need that in my exercise routine. I educate myself every morning. I probably do one online training class a week, minimum. Saturday mornings are kind of my, I've taken lots of AI classes. I listen to mortgage coach videos. I go in and listen to Barry on a regular basis. MBS Highway is like one of my favorite resources for mortgage originators, bar none. Affirmations are great, prayer. And I just want you to think about how can I elevate my daily practice to get myself in a better mindset as we move into the new year. These are some things I want you to also think about because when people are so down as they are right now about the market and, you know, it's been a challenging season. So they're like, people are calling me going, I just don't know if I want to do this anymore. I don't know if I have it in me. This is not fun anymore. So we've got to go back and tap into what did you love about this business when you got started in it? What is it that fuels you? We've got to tap back into what is your passion, right? We've got to think consciously about that. You know, persistence is everything. No matter how difficult the market, you've got to get up tomorrow and take another step. You're here today. I honor you for that because that means you're investing in your personal growth. Your drive, tap back into what makes you feel happy and gives you that drive. And sometimes we got to dig deep to find it in a challenging market. You've got to recommit to yourself and this business that failure is not an option, that you're going to do the work to move the needle forward. And there are things you can do we're going to talk about today. And then your vision, start to think about what do you want? If you, if you could paint the perfect picture for real and finances were no option, what does that look like for you? Give some time and energy to creating your future vision and putting thought to what you want to create. Because this all takes courage. 
And sometimes you've got to get uncomfortable and step into your courageous self because fear is so limiting and we've all lived it. And this has been a season that has created so much fear with what's going on in the world and our business. So we have to use our mindset to overcome a lot of the challenges that we face in our day-to-day -day life. Because honestly, when we create a bulletproof mindset, these are the positive benefits. And I am, I'm sitting here like real time with you going, it is true. It keeps me motivated, inspired. It reduces your stress level. You become a better human and a better leader and a better spouse and a better father and a better friend and all that when we focus on getting ourselves right first. Definitely helps with sleep, helps remove some of the fear of failure. So I want today for you to make a conscious choice that it's time to let go of some of the neg negative self-talk that we've all you know, heard so much of. And it may be for me, I stopped watching news. I mean, not financial news, but I stopped watching a lot of other news because it was no longer serving me. So pay attention to what is no longer serving you. Because this quote is so true. Then we start to close the door of your mind to your negative thoughts. The door of opportunity begins to open. It really does. You'll see a crack and all of a sudden the world will seem a little bit brighter. So next, I want you to think about creating the ultimate vision. Now, vision is different from goals. So for me, vision every single year when I was leading my branch and we had a big branch, it was over a billion dollar branch. I had 32 LOs working for me and I would go in every year going, what do I want to create if Financial hardship wasn't, you know, an issue. What in a perfect world would I want my branch to look like? What did I want my mortgage practice to look like? Do I have the right people in the right seats? How do I want to expand and grow? So I want you to think about vision. In my coaching and training programs, we have a whole vision exercise that we put through people through so they can get really clear. But I just want to share a couple of tidbits today for you to start to think about Let's not think about the obstacles. Let's think about what you actually really want to create because I think it's super powerful. So having a well-defined vision provides you with a sense of purpose and direction. And so I want you to think outside your limiting belief zone about your vision, right? Your business vision is rooted in your core values and your passion for life. So think about what's most important to you. I love doing value exercises with my clients because I want you to start just writing down a few words of the things that you value. And I also want you to think about, there's actually scientific evidence that if you do not value money, if you do not value wealth or you don't value success, you may not be one of the nation's top producers because there is great abundance thinking that comes with creating wealth. And the way I look at it is I'm gonna go to work every day. I wanna create as much wealth as I can create because I can help more people. The more I have the capacity to live an abundant lifestyle, the more people I can help and serve in my lifetime. So I'm very driven in service to other people. And then a clearly defined vision directly impacts the outcome of the business and life you desire. So I really want you to just think about in a perfect world, maybe you want to improve your relationships with your family. Maybe you want to have non-negotiables for your business that you don't have now when you're working too many hours. What vision? Maybe you haven't taken a vacation in years and you want to take your kids on vacation. Megan, you were talking to me about a vision you have, right? So think about what vision you have for your future. And the time to act on that vision is now. So much of us put things off. The reason I own a mortgage coaching and a train company right now is because 15 years ago, I set my vision into play, which included this. And I went on to create it from scratch. And I'm very proud of that. But that started with a thought. Vision is created in two forms, right? We think it first and then we bring it into reality. So just start thinking about what you really want to create. So we want you to identify your core values. What core values are most important to you? We just talked a little bit about that. The reason it's so important, like I know for me, trust is my number one value. So you can't be in my circle of friends you, I don't want to work with you, right? Like, unless I trust you. And I was that way with my referral partners. We built trusted relationships and we built partnership. And I want to encourage you to put words to what you want to create. Talk to your realtors about wanting to be in partnership with them. But your core values are really important to get aligned with. Because, you know, if excellence is a core value, if family is a core value, 
Um, I mean, there's so many values, there's hundreds of values, but really think about what are those for you? What's most important? Connection to me is huge. I'm a relationship person. I love being connected deeply with people because that is my fuel. But what we want to do is use our values to align with our daily practices, right? Because when we, sometimes we go through our day and our actions are not actually aligned with our values and we get really out of sync and we feel very disconnected and we don't feel like we're productive. And so we want to get really clear about what's most important to me. And you can just put words to that. You know, what are the 10 things that are most important to you in your life? And are your daily activities aligned with those values? So just think about that for a minute, because this is where it really starts. I use my values to make big decisions. When I get asked to do speaking engagements, is it aligned with my values? And if it's not aligned with my values, if it's going to take me away from my life or my family for way too long, then I might choose no. It may not serve me in a meaningful way. Because I know for me, I need bumpers around me because I think everything is a good idea and I'm a total FOMO. I don't want to miss out on anything. So I need people that can jump in and go, wait a minute, is this in alignment with what's most important to you and the people you want to serve? So think about that in terms of the decisions that you're making. So creating the ultimate vision for your business. You might just want to take a picture of the slide. These are just a few of the questions from the you know, from our vision exercise that we do, but what initially inspired you to start your career in the mortgage business? I mean, most of us ended up here by accident, right? We didn't, we didn't go to college to get here, but it's such a great, great, great business. And when you love it, you love it fully. Most people, many people leave the business and come back because they realize they never felt as passionate about anything other than their mortgage career. What aspects of your business bring you the most fulfillment? Is it relationship development? Is it being out in the world? Is it helping structure a really difficult loan? Is it getting somebody a first time home buyer into their first house and them being handed the keys? What we do changes lives in a meaningful way. So think about what a fulfilled life would look like for you. And then how can you enhance the experience of the people that you serve? How can you create more value going into this next year? Because honestly, it's all about the value we bring to our clients, the value we're bringing to our referral partners, the value we're bringing to our team. Are your values aligned and are you bringing more value? What do you need to do to expand your reach by creating more value for the people in your circle? Because the more value you bring to others, you know, the more successful you are going to be. And then think about what difference are you making in the world and, and you know, what do you want to create? And every year I would going into going, okay, I want to build 10 new referral partnerships this year because I'm fueled by relationship. So if I want to build 10 new referral partners, who are those referral partners going to be? I remember the year I said, I want to build two new referral partners with financial planners. And I built a script around how to build relationship with financial planners. And I still am in relationship with my number one financial planner that I met through that exercise today. And he was, he was responsible for about 30% of my income every year. One of the best referral partners I ever had. So do you have a financial planner in your arsenal? Do you have a divorce attorney? You know, not just realtor partners. How intentional are you about staying in touch with your past client database? Because real change really happens when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. And for me, change is fun. And the more you take chances and the more you pick up that phone and cold call people to try to get appointments, even if they say no, the more you find the few that will say yes and it helps you continue to take steps forward. And then all of a sudden that fear dissipates. When we start to get somebody that says, yes, I need your services. Yes, I need your help and support. Yes, my lender hasn't done a great job for me in this last year. I need a different lender on my team. And believe me, realtors are struggling right now and they need you more than ever. And they are saying yes to appointments more than ever. So don't get caught up in the story that everybody's calling realtors trying to get appointments because it's just not true. Janine was in my Mortgage Mastermind Elite program a couple of years ago. And the reason I have her in her is she's making such a big difference in the world. When she was in my training program, she set this mission that she wanted to make a bigger difference in the world and she wanted to expand Black home ownership in America. And she's doing it. She's just launched an educational foundation 
to educate people on home ownership. And I'm so proud of what she's created. But that started with a thought in her head just a few years ago. Uh, Janine's out of Denver. She's just a beautiful human. She's on the board of AIM. And I'm so proud of what she has created because what she created started with a vision to create a greater impact in the world. And you can do the same thing. So let's go in and let's talk about building your mortgage success plan. What does a goal plan really look like? And I believe that goals aren't enough. We have to have a passion behind our goals. We have to be compelled by it. It has to be something that fuels our soul. And because if it's not, it, I mean, to have a goal written on a piece of paper that you don't feel passionate about achieving, usually what happens is nothing. So what I want you to think about as we go into this new year, and maybe some of the areas that you have felt really stuck this year, I want you to think about how can you propel your vision in a much bigger way as we go into this new year? You know, one of the things I used to always do when I'm going to reignite my own practice, you know, there's the book, The One Word, but think about what is your word going to be as you go into the new year? I'm a big fan of setting my intention around one year and what I want to create. And I've already established my word for 2024 and my word for 2024 is simplicity because it's been about growth and expansion in such a big way. And now I want to do things simpler because mortgage loan originators need simple strategies for success. Nothing complicated because you won't do it if it's complicated. So my word for next year is simplicity. But I love this because many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Do you know how many leaders in the world share this story? Most of us give up right before we get to the finish line. It's too hard. And you guys, I just want to share a quick story with you because one of the guys that became one of my number one referral partners in my mortgage career was the number one realtor at that time and space in Manhattan Beach. And he kind of came from nowhere and I couldn't figure out how he had done what he had done in such a short period of time. So I became, I didn't know him and my mortgage partner and I decided to commit to get his attention. Well, we came up, we made it kind of fun because he never responded. We would call him and leave him a voicemail. We would text him, we would email him and we never heard back. This went on for two years. So we didn't take it personally. We just kind of made a game of it and we rotated every week. One of us would reach out but he didn't communicate for two years until he did. So I want you to think about how many of you would pursue somebody for two years with no expectation of anything return. Not terribly many of you probably, because you put three or four efforts in and if they didn't respond, you'd move on. But we didn't move on. And guess what? One day, Sean responded and said, I'll give you 15 minutes, I'll come to your office. And we were so excited and candidly, I was nervous because I'm like, oh gosh, we tried so hard to get this guy. We don't even really know anything about him. But the cool thing was his lender had faltered. His lender had taken on a partner and that partner was doing most of the work. And he goes, you guys were always second choice because no one has ever pursued me like you guys. You were always my second choice lender. You just didn't know it. He walked in the door to give us that 15 minute meeting. He stayed for two hours. When he left, he gave us a $1.4 million loan. And we went on to build a very, very fruitful relationship with this realtor. He became a very dear friend. But that came from perseverance and not giving up right before the finish line. So this is the thing. The power of goal planning, there's a lot of data around the power of goals. And if you're one that's like, well, you probably wouldn't be on the call if you weren't thinking about goal planning, right? But it really is a powerful tool. And when Harvard did this study, 1979 showed that 13% of the class that had written goals but had no plan made two times the money. So, I mean, that's already a big win. But then they went on to go 3% of the class both had written goals and a plan. And they made 10 times the money, 10 times. Because they put pen to paper, they created a plan because it becomes our roadmap to success. And I do my 90 day goal plan every 90 days. And the thing is I go and I read it. I'm like, oh shoot, I didn't do that. I need to bring that to fruition. It keeps me on track. It gives you a roadmap for success. So when you start getting intentional, 
with your objectives and your purpose, the results can be absolutely staggering. And I see it time and time and time again with my coaching clients because they start to create things they didn't think were possible because this got in the way. Our negative thinking and our limiting beliefs get in the way. So I want you to really, I'd love to have 100% of you and put in the chat, if you are absolutely committed to drive to another level of success and if you're willing to put a goal plan in place for the first quarter of the year, because I'd love to help you. And Megan has said, if you put your email address, I'll remind you of this, into the chat, we will be able to send you our 90-day goal plan. I'd be happy to get you a copy of that so you can kick off the year strong. But you've got to put your email in the chat for us to be able to obtain it from today's call. So I'd love to send you our 90-day goal plan, and I'd love to help you kick off the year strong because I believe we've got to prepare for this year ahead because we don't know when, but I think it's going to be a really transformational year for mortgage loan originators. So I want you to start thinking instead of in the present moment, Again, I, you'll hear me talk about this a lot. What do you want to create? But I like to begin with the end in mind because intentional choices each equals desired outcome. What outcome do you really want to create? Even if it seems outlandish, you know, what kind of production do you want to do next year? How many families do you want to serve and help? Because that's really what this is about. I never focused on monetary gain. I focused on serving families because I know for me and for those of you that own homes, it's life-changing. It changes people's life. I wouldn't anywhere near be where I am today without the investment of real estate. So I'm a big believer that the best time to buy is right now because we can't time markets. And I almost this year, Megan, I almost wanted to go back into origination again and go out because I know I'm so passionate about home ownership that I could absolutely, you know, absolutely use all the tools from MBS Highway to really educate and show people why now is a great time to buy and we can refinance later. But I want you to think about the outcome and I don't want you to think small. I want you to think big because sometimes it takes big dreams to take us to the next level. And then I want you to think about what choices are you gonna need to make to bring that dream to reality? Because we each have about 30,000 mornings in our life based on the average age expectancy. And the way I look at life may be a little bit different than some of you, but at age 54, we have about 10,000 mornings remaining. And when you think about that, it puts it in perspective. Wow, we've already gone through two thirds of our mornings at age 54, which probably is not the case anymore. It used to be the average age of a mortgage professional. And we've dropped certainly because we've got some new blood coming into this business. But the great thing is we wanna be intentional about those mornings because we only have so many of them. So my whole premise of my company, The Defining Difference, is the defining difference is an intentional choice. If we don't like the way our life or our business is going today, we have the ability to wake up tomorrow and make new choices. So what I'm challenging you to do today is what new choices can you make to drive your sex to self to that next level of success, to helping more people, to creating more value, and really making a defining difference in your own life, in your own business, because you are entirely capable of doing it. And then I want you to write this down. Like, think about where you're going to be. Just take your age and just write it down. Add one year, add five years to your age, add 10 years to your age, add 20 years to your age. And I want you to write down what that number is, because you know darn well, time goes by in a flash. Five years goes by. I mean, it's hard to believe it's the end of 2023, right? Time goes so quickly. So we wanna be super intentional about how we're spending our time. So I want you to think about in the next year where you want to go. And I also want you, well, I'll share, I'll share something that was, I don't have a slide around this, but it was life altering for me. And it kind of started with this premise of where do I wanna be 10 years from now? So I was, at a therapist many years ago, going through marriage challenges. And that therapist said something to me that I now really challenge my coaching clients around. She said, if you fast forward your life 10 years from now and everything is exactly the same, are you happy, satisfied and fulfilled with your life and your business? So I'm not gonna tell you what I said, but I blurted it out pretty loud. And the answer was no, right? It was absolutely not. I wasn't happy, satisfied and fulfilled in every area of my life.
But what I've got in that instant, you know, someone can say one word to you and it changes that, you know, switch flips. That was a, you know, switch flip moment for me. And I'm like, wow, if I don't make change right now, 10 years from now, I'm going to be living my life in exactly the same place. I'm going to be in the exact same place. So think about, are you happy, satisfied, and fulfilled in your business, in your relationships, with your finances, you know, with your health and your wellness, with your own growth? And really think about, because if you're not, then the time to make change is now. And maybe it's time to invest in yourself. And maybe it's time to tell yourself, that it's time to make change right now and to stop putting off what could give you a great future life. So we want you to really get intentional. So this is something that I share every time I get into goal planning, because I really do believe that we have to first assess our business. And I really recommend to my clients that they look at this like every 90 days, because if you, if you were filling this out, in 2020 and you were a successful originator, 2020 was obviously a banner year. It was one of the years very much like my banner year when I hit 230 in personal production, 230 million. It was my banner year as an originator. So I would have filled this questionnaire out, you know, assessment way different than I would today. But I want you to assess these key areas of your business and just, you can write down a number on a piece of paper, but I want you to look at, are you satisfied right now with a number of your referral partners? Because I haven't talked to anybody right now in your 2023 that's really satisfied with their number of referral partners, because the reality is our referral partners are doing less business. So we need to cast a wider net. And are you happy and satisfied? Just, do you want to rate yourself on a scale of zero to 10? Zero being you are not satisfied and 10 being you very satisfied your personal production levels. I mean, look, I'm coaching $100 million originators that are doing 20 million this year and they're feeling so deflated. So many people's business is down 60 and 70%. So if you're one of those few that have not had that experience this year, congratulations, because it has been a tough season. We know that. But I want you to really score yourself. Be honest. Maybe you're a two right now. Maybe you were an eight a couple of years ago. What about your compelling client experience? You have less business, you have more time to create a more compelling client experience. And if you haven't put time into your own growth, I suggest the time to start focusing on that is right now. What kind of experience your client's going through? You have one, but is it defined? Could you elevate their experience and make it a wow? Could you create more value for your clients and your referral partners? Let's talk about marketing execution. I think it's a big deal as we go into 2024. Do you have a marketing plan? One of the things we teach in my programs is how to build a 12-month marketing plan. A very simple plan, by the way. It's a super simple thing to do. And then we just execute to the plan. I'm all about systems and processes. But how are you doing on marketing execution? Are you marketing to your past client database consistently? Do you have a plan? Do you have a social media plan? You know, what are you actually doing to get out into the world and expand your reach? Are you doing educational videos? Are you out on all social channels? Maybe you're just haven't adopted social at all. But the time to start is right now, because I've seen several of my clients in the last two years completely blow the socks off and elevate their game nationally by using social media as a method to get in front of more people and become the expert in their industry and in their market. And it's a very powerful tool. And we teach marketing execution strategies so that you can really expand your reach in a challenging market. Are you productive? Are you going to work every day with a plan? Do you have your day mapped out? Do you have your income generating activities that you're focused on each and every day to move the needle? Are you intentional? Are you going to work and just it's the fire drill and you're managing a bunch of challenging clients or seeking clients right now that you don't have, but are you managing your time and your energy? And are you using your time productively to really move the needle and expand your reach? And I know a lot of people lost their, their teams this year. So this is a tougher subject, but look, you know, the minute this market changes, we have to prepare because when it moves, it moves quickly. I have seen our market literally change in 48 hours and the needle moves quickly. And certainly within a couple of weeks, we can see us being an entirely different market here in the US. 
So prepare. What would you need if you got back to doing 5, 10, 20 loans a month? What would you need in terms of support? Even if you can't create that support right now, you need to map out and be prepared. What would you need? Would you need an LOA? Would you need a marketing assistant? Would you need a new processor? What would maybe you need a new company, right? Maybe you need a new platform. Maybe you're not at the right place. But think about what you need because you want to be prepared when this market turns, whether it's end of first quarter or second quarter. When it turns, are you prepared to take advantage of success? Because the year I hit 230 million, the reason I hit that is I had my systems dialed in, I had my team in place, and we were ready to hit the ground running. We're doing like eight loans a day. But we've built the system around that. So that's what I'm suggesting is even if you're starting small and you're new to this business, we want to think about what you would actually need if the market shifts. And let's get you prepared for that. And good self-care. Are you taking care of yourself? Number one goal. We've got to take care of ourselves. Like I've coached so many clients that have had really traumatic health issues. And it's a big deal. It's one of the things I go into gratitude for each and every morning is my health because it really is the core of everything. Nothing else really matters. So what can you do to really get yourself back in shape and take care of yourself? And then your work-life balance, score yourself on that. Are you, do you have non-negotiables? If you do not have any non-negotiables for your life and your business, I want you to write that down. I want you to just make a list of your own non-negotiables. So I'll give you an example what some of mine are because I raised three kids and I was running a branch and one of the top originators in the nation. But some of my non-negotiables were be home for dinner by 6.30 so I could have dinner with my children. There was no phones allowed at the dinner table, period. Just wasn't allowed. Uh, we did two weeks vacation every summer. That was hard because I didn't have a partner for many years. I had to get somebody to help cover my business. I lost deals. It wasn't perfect, but I felt that it was terribly important to build a connected family, to have time as a family unit with my children. And I did that. And I would never miss a sporting event. That was a non-negotiable. I had three kids in sports. It was a lot sometimes as a top originator, but I made a commitment to my kids that I would show up to their games. And I educated my referral partners around that being a non-negotiable, but I would absolutely return their call the minute the game was over. So think about what that's like for you. And next, let's go in, let's talk about your business plan. What do you want to create? So I want you to just take a picture of this if you want. Better yet, put your email in the chat and I will send you the goal plan. So you'll have all of this at your disposal. But as much as it's painful to write down your production numbers for 2023, you need to look at that because you know what? I have a feeling you're going to be pretty happy with your 2024 numbers. So we want to look at today as a benchmark and we want to look at what we can create. How many families do you want to serve? How many lives do you want to change in 2024? Let's focus on that. And then we want you to look at your business gaps. Like where do you have a gap in your business? We all have them. I was talking to my team yesterday about some gaps in my own business. So the way we have to really look at where do we need to fill the gap? Maybe I know in 2020, one of the biggest gaps was there was so much business coming in. Leads were just dropping by the wayside. Now you probably don't have that challenge today because there's not as many leads, but think about Maybe you're in your own way, right? Maybe one of the gaps is you're not doing the daily activities that you know you need to do to move the needle forward. Maybe you're really not following up with leads because they decided not to buy right now. So you're letting those leads kind of fall off the wagon instead of having a system to stay in touch with them weekly or monthly until they're ready to buy. You know, maybe your gap is you're not building new referral partners and you know that's got to be part of your plan and you're ready to commit to that because you're ready to take you know, you're ready to take control of your business again. It takes courage to do that, but I'm going to encourage you to lean in and realize that you can have a good year in 2024 if you make some decisions to create change. So these are the five key areas of your life that we go into when we get into deep goal planning. We want you to look at your career and your work, your health and your wellness. We want you to look at your family and relationships, the richness of life, right? That's one of my favorite things. Personal and business growth, what are you doing to invest in yourself? What are you doing to grow? You know, MBS, I mean, Barry knows, Barry's been a dear friend of mine for over 20 years. And like, I probably am one of the biggest MBS Highway fans on the planet because I get so excited about each tool, whether it be deck consolidation or whether it be, 
you know, the real estate report card, which Barry knows I have used the real estate report card with all of my realtors. I've led trainings around it. So, I mean, I personally feel like MBS is a tool in today's world that would be my number one tool. Like you can't live without as a mortgage loan originator. And I really believe that. Um, because I, I used it in my own business and I met Barry right before he launched his first coach, his first company. Um, and so I have followed his journey through and it's been such a key success factor in my life, in my business. So, and then your personal finances, I know right now you're probably not saving a lot of money, right? But the reality is getting intentional about how is your debt? What are you doing to manage your debt? What can you do to get more intentional about taking some of your income and saving it for a rainy day and starting to build wealth yourself. And I know this is a tougher year to consider that, but we've got to get serious about our finances and look at it. And I remember when I had to look at it myself, when I started going through a divorce and I had to get really serious about what my personal finances look like. And look, I had a bunch of debt at that point in time and I didn't really want to look in the mirror, but I did. And I started making intentional choices to start cutting my debt little by little by little. And it started to make a difference over time. So let's go through your career and work. I'm not going to go through all this because if you put your email address in the chat, you're going to get the goal plan. So you'll get the whole plan. But I want you to think about what are three stretch goals that you can create for 2024 in your business and your career? What do you want to create? Maybe you really need to expand your referral partner network. Maybe you need to build a marketing plan that you're going to execute on. You're going to build it over the next two weeks and you're going to execute starting January 1. We want to put specific action steps to bring our goals to reality. You know, maybe you don't have systems and processes around what happens when a lead comes in. One of my clients, Stacia Weisher, she built a, out a lead to legacy system where she knows exactly what's going to happen from the time a loan comes in the door, lead, to one year post-close, legacy. She has a plan every step. There is a roadmap for what that client is going to experience with her. And I love that kind of intentionality. Maybe you're not communicating with your past client database. You don't have a CRM that you're utilizing. Get a CRM. If you need direction on what CRM, email me at info at cindyyearman.com. We'll give you some suggestions. I have a guide on CRMs that we've researched. Look, we want you to be successful, but think about what it is that you need to take action on in the first 90 days. Let's start the year strong, not with New Year's res resolutions. Let's get intentional about our vision and our goals and let's make it happen. And I was talking to one of my very successful clients last night and she's not had the year she wants to have clearly, but the reality is she's like, I can't be successful just in my state of California any longer. I've got to get outside. I'm getting licensed in Texas right now. She's already got meetings set up. She's flying to Dallas in January and she's meeting with a realtor partner who agreed to introduce her to her whole office. And she's taking action on a bigger plan. She's expanding her reach and she's gone all in in 2023 on social media. She got outside her comfort zone. She hired a social media expert. She's doing videos on a weekly basis. She's expanded her reach. She's had 10 realtor appointments off social media in the last 30 days. And that's what an intentional loan officer will do today to create their own success. So I'm not going to go through all these, but if you don't know what kind of goals you have, we do give you sample goals. There's more on the guide, but just to give you some suggestions of things that you could do that might expand your thinking a little bit. And health and wellness, what do you want to commit to? Are you working out? Do you need health practices? Maybe you want to create a morning practice, but think about what you're willing to commit to and what action steps does it take? I've been known to have my clients like pick up and call a gym and, and set an appointment with the trainer right on the spot to really focus on health because I think it's so incredibly important. So, I mean, here's some health and wellness goals. You know, and I want you, if you want to lose weight, because obviously a lot of people gained weight during COVID, myself included, you need to get really clear on what you're going to do and by when. Give it a date. And what clear steps are you actually going to take to get you there? We've got to be specific. We've got to put by when. And we need you to get accountability to stay on track. Family and relationships. So my coaching programs, particularly my mastermind group, we talk about this. You know, maybe there's shifts that you need to make. Maybe you have a relationship that needs to be healed. Maybe you haven't forgiven someone that you need to forgive. Maybe you have a really challenging relationship in your business. Maybe you don't have the right LOA on your team. Maybe you've got a loan officer working for you that you know it's time to help along. 
but let's really look internally at our relationships that we have in our life and in our business and what needs to be adjusted. Let's go in with intention. If the people around us are no longer serving us, if you've got naysayers in your life that are just completely negative, maybe it's time if you can't remove them, maybe it's time to distance yourself from them, right? It's called being intentional about how we lead our life. And I am extremely intentional about how I lead my life and my relationships. I will not let toxic people into my universe. I'm very protective of that. So here's some goals around family relationships. Maybe you want to create some traditions in your life. Maybe you want to have family meals together, go on vacation, but let's get intentional about how you want to elevate your relationships with those that are close to you. And then your own personal growth. What are you going to commit to this year? Maybe you're not a member of MBS and you want to join MBS, right? But I want you to really think about your personal business growth. What are you going to commit to? Maybe this is the year you're going to hire a coach. It doesn't have to be me, Cindy Erdman, right? It can be somebody else. There's many wonderful coaches in America, but I believe right now every mortgage loan originator needs a coach because you need accountability. You need new tools in your tool chest and you need to be given the opportunity to think bigger than you may be thinking right now. But I want you to think about your personal goals. What do you want to learn? Maybe you really haven't mastered chat GPT or you're not doing social media and you want to get comfortable in that. It's a great way to grow. But think about where you need to grow and get intentional about how you're going to do it. Maybe there's a book that you've been committed to read and you haven't done it yet. So get intentional about your personal growth to elevate the game. These are some suggested tips and tools on that. And then your personal finances. I feel like we don't talk about it enough. Your personal finances, what are you going to do to get that in check? Look at your debt. Put together a budget. You know, everyone's like, no, not budgets, myself included. But the reality is I did it several different times in my career, and it really helped me stay on track because I think we've got to live our life from a place of intentional, and it really starts with our personal financial health and moving that needle forward in a meaningful way. And here's some ideas for you. We've got many more in the goal plan. And then I'm going to encourage you to find an accountability partner. Get another loan officer on board with you, somebody in your branch, it could be a friend, it could be somebody from this group, but get an accountability partner and have a 30 minute call once every two weeks to stay on track, share your goal plans with each other, get a realtor partner, do your goal plan with a realtor. I did that many years in a row. Great way to bond with the realtor, get a realtor as an accountability and help them stay on track and be a partner to them in a really meaningful way. Because I personally believe that the best investment we will ever make is the investment we make in ourselves. It's so true. I mean, I've had a coach for 30 years, so it's probably why I am one today, but I believe that we have to invest in ourselves because we are our greatest asset, bar none. I put this in with Michelle Town. I've coached Michelle for 10 years. I'm so proud of Michelle because she's out of the Denver market, but most of her business is in California. But you know what? Like even in this challenging year, this quote was from a couple of years ago, but the reality is she's going to close out the year at about 125, 125 million. And in this market, that is a really big feat because she's so intentional about her business, about her team, about her referral partnership. She is a coach for my company. She's brilliant. We have 15 incredible coaches that are all boots on the ground, top mortgage originators in America today. So if you're interested in private coaching, just email us at info at cindyertman.com. And we can tell, share a little bit more about that. And very quickly, thanks, Megan, for letting me share this. We just launched a new program. This was a dream of mine. I spent the last two years putting together what I would call my magic formula of how did I actually hit seven-figure success? Exactly step-by-step, step, how did I do it? So this is the Cindy Ertman plan for mortgage success. It was my step-by-step -step roadmap for how I gained seven figure success in the mortgage industry. And it's been a two year labor of love. We just launched this a couple of weeks ago. We are now out in the universe. We're on discounted pricing till the beginning of the year. So these are my definitive steps for how I built and grow my business. You can do this totally online, self-guided, and you get 20 videos of me training the lessons. So I can, I tell you exactly how to, you can download all the training guides, It'll, you're going to get weekly coaching emails. This program will change your life if you actually do the work. And my people pay me a lot more money to do this live and in person with me. And there's also three bonuses you're going to get. You're going to get a copy of a webinar that I just led. 
You're also going to get our three marketing strategies. We're gonna, you're going to get the goal plan and then you're going to get video marketing ideas because no one knows what to do videos on. We give you 60 great ideas. So I'm not going to go into this deep dive. There is a QR code here. If you're interested in learning more, just go ahead and grab the QR code with your phone. Um, Malia, if you could also put it into the chat, if you want to click on it that way, we could do that as well. But it's 997. And again, you'll have this. You honestly will have these guides forever. Download them, use them. They're the gift they keep on giving. You can use it over and over and over and over in your business to continue to elevate your success. We are elevating our pricing um, at the beginning of the year. We're going up to 1297. So this is a great Christmas gift to yourself to really kick off the year strong and get you like really on a path to set yourself up for a very successful 2024. And I'd be honored to be part of that journey with you. But grab this QR code and, and just save it for a rainy day. You can send it to yourself, but we'd love to have a conversation or just email us at info at cindyertman.com. And my team will jump on a call with you, one of our advisory coaches, and really help you through some of your biggest challenges right now. Again, our commitment for those of you that know me, this is my passion. I say, this isn't what I do. It's who I am in the world. So I want to thank you, Megan, for the opportunity to be here with you today and share with your audience because I just am excited about next year. I think we have some new opportunities ahead and I really want to help people be extremely successful. Cindy, always amazing having you on. And, you know, if you guys have any questions, we do have a couple minutes here, but I have a question for you, Cindy. You know, you talk a lot about core values and my curiosity wants to know what your core values are. Well, I don't have my whole list in front of me, but I'm, like I said, my number one core value is trust. Um, family is a deep core value for me because I think it's, it's just, it fuels my soul. Um, and even being a very, busy mortgage professional. I think setting up my non-negotiables really helped me stay focused. I also wanted to be a good mom and I work really hard to continue to be a supportive mom to my now adult children. Um, relationship is big for me. Um, connection is on my top 10 values because connection to me is my fuel and my soul. And that's why I love coaching so much because in a coaching relationship, it's such an intimate relationship where you're not just talking about people's business, but we're talking about real life and how they intersect. And so it allows us to build a very deep relationship. And I have that relationship with my realtor partners as well. And the other word on mine is abundance. So I, you know, because I look at the world, like I want to, I want to look at the world through an abundant mindset. You know, one of our big curses in mortgage is comparison so I look at abundance as the exact opposite of the lack, which is comparison. I don't want to compare myself to anybody. In mortgage, I want to be the best mortgage originator I could be in America. I didn't get to number one, but I got to the top 100 for over a decade. So I was proud of that, right? Mm -hmm. But and now I want to be the best coach that Cindy Erpman can be. I want my 15 coaches to be the best coaches they can be for the people that we serve. Because this is a relationship and I care about people deeply you know it's kind of my blessing and my curse but those are a few of my values well i love it thank you guys for tuning in today cindy thank you so much for providing value and giving us your heart and your soul and just being such an amazing aspect of the mortgage industry we thank you and again thank you everyone for tuning in thanks so much for having me have a great year you guys we'll talk to you soon Bye bye